Joining us now on Skype from catspaws.com is Matt May. Matt, thank you for uh, taking some time to talk with us. Anytime. I always enjoy it. Thanks for having me. Are you buying into, I mean, there was a lot of positives coming out of that game, a, a total team effort against Missouri on that game day uh, night, a huge event. Are you buying into the, the, the notion that this team has finally turned a corner and is headed in the right direction? You know, we've been tricked before. So yeah, I, I think <laughs> there's been some other times, especially the Ole Miss game and maybe a few others where we thought, ooh, they're really getting it together and they're, they're set to make a little bit of a run and maybe reach the potential that everybody thought uh, they had when they were a top five preseason team. I'm not sure people thought they were going to get that good uh, late in the year, but they started to show signs. Then, of course, you have the injury to Maryland's Noel. Uh, they weren't playing very well at Florida to begin with, the Tennessee debacle, and all of a sudden they started to kind of rally. I think the big thing, uh, the reason that this time might be a little bit different is it was very clear, uh, leading up to the Vanderbilt game, I was told from some sources that they were uh, kind of redoing, revamping their offense uh, and defense to a degree, but on the offensive end, they were revamping things uh, to take advantage of maybe uh, spreading the court out and, and really playing into the strengths of Ryan Harrow and Archie Goodwin. And I think that was the biggest thing that came out of uh, last week's two games for me, the Vanderbilt and Missouri wins, is that uh, they looked very different offensively and they looked comfortable. For the first time in, in a long time, uh, I felt like those two guys at the same time both felt like, you know, Archie's first half notwithstanding against Missouri. Uh, but outside of that, those guys looked really comfortable and played confident. And I'm not sure that we had seen that um, in any long stretches from those two guys in particular, especially in SEC play. Yeah, I agree. That, to me, that was the most refreshing thing over the last couple of games of the offense because I, I, for one, I had given up pretty much on Ryan Harrell because it seemed like mentally he had, he had kind of lost it and I didn't know if he could bounce back. And, and to me, seeing those two guys play well together was a huge part of, uh, of the success. But Julius Mays, another guy that seems to have come out of nowhere and has taken on that leadership role, uh, a guy that, that his teammates can count on, and he kind of relishes the big plays is he the type of player that you think that this team can count on to be their big, big play guy and kind of their clutch performer uh, for a long term down the stretch? He's got a lot of and he's building a resume of that for sure. I mean, how many times have we seen him hit a three at the shot clock buzzer, uh, draw a foul? I mean, he, he got that crafty uh, veteran move, the old YMCA move that I'm still trying to master, <laughs> getting a guy off his feet and, and hitting or getting a foul and getting the, the three free throws there in the last few minutes of the Missouri game. Uh, he makes the play at the end of regulation when they're down two. Uh, actually does something that you don't expect him to do, which is he, he put the ball on the deck, got in the lane, drew a defender, and found Willie Cauley-Stein for the tying layup. Uh, he just seems to me to have the highest basketball IQ of anybody on their team. Couple that with the experience of having played at three different places. He's played at NC State, played at Wright State. Uh, he's seen pretty much every situation that you're going to see at the college level. Uh, and more importantly than that, I talked to a couple guys the other night, and I think you were standing there when, uh, when I was talking to Archie Goodwin, and he said, you know, we believe and trust implicitly in Julius Mays. I mean, he's like a big brother to us. When he tells us something, uh, we take it to heart. Uh, we know that he's going to make the right play at the right time, and he makes everyone else around him better. Uh, and you've got to have one of those guys. Darius Miller was one of those guys last year. And, you know, I, he was kind of – Julius was the forgotten man in this class. I mean, he was kind of a uh, – not an afterthought in a negative way, but he was the guy that I think people thought they brought in so they would have a spot-up shooter, a sixth man, maybe a little bit of depth. And here he is playing the most minutes, uh, average the most minutes on the team so far this year. In the last three games, he's played 122 minutes. He's scored in double figures seven of the last eight. He's gone to the glass. I mean, he just does uh, every one of those winning plays that Cal always talks about. Julius Mays does those things. It's not always, doesn't always work out, but it does more often than not. And, and along with that, you know, Calipari talked about on Friday in his press conference how, how Willie Colley Stein said, you know, you guys can't just give me the ball and expect me to do something. We're all feeding off of each other. We need to do this as a, as a team. The front court for UK against Missouri had their hands full with uh, the best rebounding team in the country. They won that battle. Uh, how much load can Willie Colley Stein, Kyle Wilcher, and even Alex Poythers, how much of a load can they carry for this team? And how much do you think that they're going to need to because of the depth as, as the season continues? Yeah, I think they're all going to have to. I mean, it's pretty obvious that they're going to play seven guys right now. And, you know, Jared Polson is going to get some minutes depending on how well Ryan Harrow plays. If Ryan Harrow plays well, Jared Polson's probably not going to play very much. So, you know, you've really got it down to, to a six or seven man uh, rotation. They've got to get Kyle Wilshire playing well again. You know, he, he was playing so well for that stretch uh, after the first Vanderbilt game, played really well for the next month. Uh, hasn't played as well in the last couple weeks. I think they need to get him playing well again. Uh, make sure that he's kind of gets back closer to the guy he was for that stretch. But Willie, to me, you know, if you talk to NBA scouts, and I, and I know you do, 
Uh, you've interviewed some and whatnot. That's the guy that I think even more, maybe more than Nerlens Noel, they think has the brighter future in the NBA because he's so raw. I mean, he just hasn't played the game very much, but you look at him and you say, you know, how is a guy that big, uh, that talented and, and have uh, moved that well? And with more and more play, I think you see it. He's getting more time. He's starting to believe that he's pretty good uh, and he's playing awfully well. You know, I don't know that you can expect I guess it was a Vanderbilt against Vanderbilt. He had 20 and seven. I'm not sure you can expect 20 points from him every night. I think what you got in the Missouri game, you know, seven points, 12 rebounds. I think it was six blocks. I think that's probably more in line with what he's going to give you. But if he gives you that, uh, then Kentucky's got a really, a really good chance because uh, another thing with the new offense, he's a guy that can spread it out a little bit. He's not going to make shots, um, but he can dribble a little bit. He can pass. He can do all those things. So, uh, you know, he, he's a critical piece to this as they go forward in the final two weeks. They're viewed right now, most people have them just in the tournament, kind of on the fringe of being in or out of the NCAA tournament. Uh, but is, when you look at them as a team without New Orleans or coming off this Missouri game, do you think they are, you know, a top 25 team, maybe a potential of a top 15 team, or, or, or maybe outside of that? What, what do you think this team as it stands today, uh, resume aside, what kind of team is this in terms of the rest of the nation? You know, my, I haven't seen as many teams as I would like this year, uh, but I would guess they're probably in somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe in the th top 35, somewhere in that, you know, 30 to 40 region as it stands right now. I'm really fascinated that, you know, Mississippi State is terrible. Uh, <laughs> they, ought to, they ought to crush Mississippi State. I mean, Vanderbilt won that game by 35. I think Mississippi State had 17 rebounds and shot like 15%. Right. I mean, I, I can name one guy on that team, and I'm not sure, you know, many people can name even one guy. So right. uh, they're awful. I want to see what they do at Arkansas. Arkansas has been fantastic at home. I think the only team that has beaten them at home is Syracuse. That was way back in November. Uh, that's going to be a difficult game. Uh, Georgia will be another difficult game. I think they'll handle that. And then, of course, you don't really know what Florida will be playing for uh, in that regular season finale. But before I judge kind of whether I think they can be a top 25 team or maybe on that fringe, I want to see how they play in Fayetteville. That's an uh, exceedingly difficult place to play. Uh, that's a good team. It's a style of play that's going to be really difficult for them because they play what seems like 22 guys in a game uh, with the 40 minutes of hell and everything. So uh, if they play well down there, not even necessarily win, but if they go play well down there and are in that game from beginning to end, uh, I'll be much more convinced that, as you mentioned, going back to the first question, that they've turned the corner and have a legitimate chance uh, to maybe get themselves into the tournament and, and maybe even if the, if the seedings fall right and the matchups get to that second weekend. All right, Matt May from CatsPaws.com. Thank you very much for talking with us. Great stuff. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks, guys.